Masking is a really important tool inside of any drawing or art related application. And for those of you who are not familiar with masks, uh, a mask is essentially a shape that other objects fit within and only show up within. So essentially, I can use this star as a container for other objects that only show up within the star. If they go outside of the star, they don't show up um, and they don't overlap either. They're, they're just going to fit within the star, almost like the star is a little window that we're looking through. So to turn this star into a mask and to put other objects inside of it, I need to have this star selected, the shape that is going to become the mask, and then I'm going to head up to layer on the menu bar at the top and I'm going to choose use as mask. And when I choose use as mask, you can see that these other objects disappeared because they're not overlapping the star. But as I pull this in, you can see that this is fitting within the star. The parts of this object that lie outside of the star aren't showing up at all in the first place. Uh, now my picture disappeared because my picture is over here and my other star disappeared because my other star is over here. And some of you might be thinking, okay, yeah, that's my problem. Things keep disappearing on me whenever I try to use masks. There's a reason for that. If we look over here on the layers palette, you can see that I have star one at the very bottom and then all of these other layers are above. And you could also see that there's a little bullet point next to each one. That bullet point means that that layer is being affected by a mask below it. Now the quick and dirty way to unmask something or make it unaffected by a mask below is to do a right click on it or a two finger click if you're on a laptop and to choose ignore underlying mask. Now if you do that, sure, that doesn't get affected, but the way this is designed to work is that every object above the mask object that's in the same group gets affected by the mask. Now that's kind of key right there, within the same group. So if I've got this shape here and I want that to be masked inside of my star, I would probably want to put these together in a group. So I'm going to move this down and select it with the star. I use the shift key for that and I'm going to use the shortcut command G to group them together. Now when I do that, I now have a group containing these two objects. There's a mask at the bottom because the mask is always at the bottom and above it is the shape that's showing up within the mask and the other two objects are not affected since they're not in the same group. If you don't use groups, masking starts to get really crazy really fast and it can be very, very difficult to work with. Uh, there's another feature that you guys might find up on the layer menu and it is mask with selected shape and if you're going crazy trying to figure out why you can't seem to select that no matter what you do uh, it's actually designed for pictures so over here I have this picture I can select a shape and a picture at the same time and then it lets me use mask with selected shape which essentially creates a group automatically which is nice and it puts the picture in the group on top of the mask and I can now mask that picture within the selected shape so I hope this helps if you keep up with the with the groups and you stay on top of grouping things together even before you create your masks just to kind of plan out how you'd like to implement your masks then you'll probably never have a problem it's going to be really really easy to work with masks for you and if you're working with pictures then you can take that shortcut and you can use mask with selected shape so i hope you guys like this tutorial if you did please subscribe if you haven't already i've got more coming soon